it is quite quite hard to get a management job as compared to the technical job here in the uk too intense uh is it easy i mean how did you find actually doing the msc course in the uk that one year will decide your whole future 300 350 rejections <laughs> before getting this job and we are supposed to give sponsorship to the person who is having 5 or 6 years of experience who can put some of the uh, value to our company but from the next day i was in in the live project and uh, the one who was training me he said to me just do mistakes obviously they don't want to let you go because if, if they are putting some time into you they want obviously they want you to sponsor i'm more pleased than yourself to be honest i mean looking at you smiling here and the reason being because uh, when when i started basically this journey when when i said uh, I, i need to basically share my experience with graduates so the main sort of purpose was so i can i can they, they have success basically what they're looking for and looking at graduates like yourself i mean you achieved what you wanted basically in your life basically your that, that was your aspiration and that's that's give me a lot more sort of yeah power basically and a lot more energy to share more sort of yeah these sort of kind of stories so you are here to share that success story here so i would start with the basic sort of yeah question uh, about your background so to ensure the people don't think you are from the chosen one and basically you are just one of them uh, when when you started basically embarking uh, from from the home country and came over to the uk so over to yourself anuj if you can briefly introduce yourself and just talk me briefly about your background uh thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity first of all to start with I'm, i think i'm too small right not to guide a lot of students over there but yeah uh let me come into my field so my name is anuj jha i did my bachelor's in civil engineering from 2017 to 2021 batch and just after finishing my bachelor's in 2021 i moved to uk for my masters in structural engineering from coventry university and when i finished my masters like on 2022 september i had two job offer from uk and uh, yeah so obviously the better one i chose them and just after finishing my term time the next day i started my uh, professional career as a graduate engineer so this is a basic professional introduction of mine yeah. i th- i think that's that's good enough but obviously you 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 just basically done then in a minute and uh, going from the study to get those offers i mean that that takes quite a lot of time and struggle but obviously we're going to talk about all those struggles there but before that so obviously i'm going a step back basically i know uh, like i mean from overseas like if you're from india uh, you know there's a lots of questions anxiety and fear that comes to mind when uh, people think about yeah coming over to the uk and get basically some sort of yeah choosing their course their university so i just want to start from that end uh, how did you came to choose basically structural engineering was that always in your mind that this is the subject i need to go in or did you had any guidance anything in in the past as well or choosing the the right university for yourself uh so basically when i was in my third year of bachelor's um i did my, I, i was doing my civil engineering and obviously i'm not that good in some of the management things i am quite good in numbers and technicality but i researched about the uk and all and as i said a lot of students as well because uh civil engineering in this hotel occupation list you have to research a lot everything from 0 to 100 everything you you can't rely on this is the possibilities and this is the possibilities so it is quite quite hard to get a management job as compared to the technical job here in the uk and I, as i said like i was quite i was lucky like i'm quite good in technicality so for structural engineering the next step uh, from civil engineering the next step i thought like to go with the structural engineering or msc in civil engineering but, but to be more precise i chose the structural engineering and it's it's not uh, that hard to get in the management as well but as compared to technicality you need uh, quite more efforts to get a management job in uh, here in the uk I'm, i'm not lying it it's like honest review about that because uh, uh, for technicality somehow you need uh, soft skill is very very much needed for everything but if you mm, for management you need to be more more like to convince people you have that ability in your mind like what you are speaking how you will convince the people and all and for technicality you know that uh, we we 
we use the numbers and all but you just need a basic thing of communication like you you just provide your details to the other things other people so this was in my mind then the second thing about like don't go with the universities universities ranking are nothing just unless until it's cambridge and oxford as some of the russell groups and I, as per my thing all of the students who came from india and pakistan they all are like um, middle class family some someone just who can afford they can go with the cambridge and some lesser groups or else go with the modules which modules you are best in what you are looking for in the future which is, which modules are in the demand and which modules you want to score the most because modules are the best you have to be focus on the modules don't go with the university rankings and no one is looking into university ranking no one no one yeah if like i haven't had any experience where i was uh, in the uk i just had 6 months of bachelor's uh, internship experience so yes do some of the hard works to get to one which is like above 60% somehow if you don't have experience the recruiters or the employers will see but no one is going to see your university unless and till cambridge and oxford just leave that things so this was in the mind then i went to the modules i selected the coventry university i came here and just started my process from zero Yeah thank you very much I know I definitely will watch that actually the university ranking it doesn't matter at all I've been in the industry for quite so long and trust me uh, I I should say I even lost my degree and because no one is asking about it and uh, the, no one cares I mean the way I did my degree from so it doesn't matter and as you pointed out I mean module is the key basically so you need to ensure uh like i mean the the modules that's what your aspirations are this is what you see your future in it basically in in the uk as long i mean they align with your future aspirations the modules i mean you should go with that and as you pointed out like majority of us i mean from overseas them from middle class sort of yeah uh, society so obviously if they can save sort of money as well in terms of the fee uh that is always positive so um yeah it's 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 really good point there uh so in terms of uh, uh, uh like i mean obviously you you said i mean you had that in mind or you were good in, in technical did you need any help i mean to get admission in the uk and basically choosing that structural engineer uh, so so sort of that course as well or did you do everything yourself uh no i researched about the modules and about the universities i selected three or four universities and i think i discussed with you as well when you were doing the calls and all so yeah i had in my mind these universities are the best for me which provides me this modules and okay i will i'll go with that modules then i researched about the universities about the location obviously you need to do the part time job for your living you are not supposed to just give all the loan and expend all the by your father's money you are not supposed to do that so yeah i chose coventry and then i went for a, a good consultancy in uh, india uh, that they have like good reputation and all so then i just said i don't want any type of uh, expression from you or any type of guidance i had all the research in my pocket so just uh, apply for these universities and all and i just want these courses so they said all right they applied for them i got offer from all the universities then i selected the uh, coventry university from them and it, it was a smooth process it was not uh, that hard but obviously uh, because i was on my last semester on that time and covid was on the peak so uh, my last semester exam got extended from 1 to 2 months and universities were continuously uh, mailing me like uh, we need your degree we need your tra- uh, transcripts and all so it was just um, conversation between me and the university they at last they agreed with all right we will uh, give you some one month of space and uh, by god grace i got uh, admission i just came on the september intake on 2021 yeah that's 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 really sort of yeah like in in short i, I should say you need to have your research done before you go to the uh-huh. consultant because they can uh, they can basically impose their own sort of yeah like uh, yeah, they can choose your course i mean for yourself which doesn't work in most of the cases so as you mentioned i mean you you had done all your research so you were clear in your mind i mean this is the course i'm doing and basically I, i i don't have to deviate from that this is where i i see my future and that is really important point because i've seen quite a lot of people they come along i mean uh, having even a, not just a degree but o- also the background in in specific field and they come to do completely a different degree which doesn't tie up basically the two and they, i'm sure i mean they they come up on the hands of the s- similar sort of yeah the uh, 
uh, the, these kind of uh, basically the consultant they advise i mean this is more scope of this co this course and that's that's where they get that that sort of caught up in in that sort of sense so it's it's really important as you mentioned that you need to have uh, your background done your background research done that this is your future this is what you have done uh, you will need to do in in your future in the uk and you are quite specific in that sense so it make a lot of sense basically if you have completely planned from from the very beginning from the very start basically this is where you're going from and where you're going to end up and in fact i mean that's that's where it helps a lot basically along the way as well when it comes to finding the job in the uk as well which will we come uh, later in this video as well right so this leads me to the next question anuja uh so uh, what about the course obviously i mean uh, from overseas people just think about yeah the difference the uk sort of yeah courses is it too intense uh is it easy i mean how did you find actually doing the msc course in the uk compare if i just say compare the two you are done the bachelor from india and masters from uk if you compare the two actually which was more intense and was it any difference did you feel between the two uh to start with yeah obviously uh it, when I, it, it's my personal experience uh this one line answer you you can pass here in the uk but to score you have to work hard it's it's not like okay like india you just read three or four paper and obviously we need we have a permission to just go with one paper with all the formulas and all but that doesn't help too much with it because uh, to score you have to work hard we, all of them is practicality you need to think you need to just switch on your brain it's not uh, in india we usually just three or four days before we read all the books and just went to the exam center we just put all the answers and yeah we score something something pass and something more than the pass for here you need to think too much all of them are practicality and all of uh, the modules you have to just put the assignments quiz everything you need to think you need to work hard to get a good score this is the main difference you will pass it's not that tough and it's not that easy as well you will pass but to get a good score you need to just have two or three nights of sleepless you you can't be rely on all right i will do the assignments and i will pass and i will get everything don't people over here usually go with the money with the part time jobs okay i am earning this much ah i'm getting money i will send here i will spend on this i will spend on that but this is only for one year after that you are not supposed to do all the of time your part time and you need some professional job you need some uh, it's like minus 3 minus 2 on december and all you need some good office environment to grow to just expand your uh, uh, things and your knowledge so for me it is quite uh, not too hard not too easy but to score you have to work hard so this is the one line thing it's not that tough it's not that easy as well right like well, well to be honest i mean i, I would just add there obviously from my personal experience like i mean uh, when when you start your course obviously the, there is a schedule i mean in in the uk market i mean in in the study terminology so you have the schedule for the whole year like i mean you need to uh, submit your assignments on such and such dates so you have the schedule for the whole year and that's where you need to plan from the very start of your course rather than as you mentioned like from overseas i mean it's just the exam sort of time a week or two week before you start sort of reading and doing everything but the difference here is is a consistent sort of yeah basically approach you need to start where you plan and start basically where from the very start uh of your course basically to plan when you're going to submit these all these assignments and when to prepare basically for all those exams so i found i mean that is the difference one thing i would add actually from the uk market what i found actually personally is a lot of uh actually help is available information the guidance the text basically the online resources they are available for yourself is up yeah. to the student himself or themselves basically how much they can gain and achieve actually how much they can read from those resources so obviously the more time you spend as a student in these sort of yeah during that sort of course uh the more knowledge you're going to gain and ultimately that's going to help you i mean down the line as well so as you mentioned i mean people the students come here they just enjoying basically getting money from the part time jobs and they ignore that sort of side which ultimately i mean uh, they get punished for those ones basically when they're not getting the the right sort of yeah they not not getting the right knowledge during the course and obviously they haven't studied properly so i always suggest actually that that is that one year 
the more knowledge you gain, uh, the better and the smoother the ride is actually going forward. So I suppose, I mean, that that is uh, one thing I, I wanted to add there. Uh, sorry to interrupt. One more point uh, I would just love to add here. Um, if you are paying this much of amount of money, uh, you have to take all the resources from the university. Universities have the uh, career guidance people who have like some of the experience who can just help you for the CVs and uh, you need to take all the advantage from them. You are not just coming here, doing your assignment and just go. That one year will decide your whole future. It's like just one year, do your whole work hard. I'm not uh, telling like, don't go with the part-time jobs because you need to give your uh, expenditure, ex uh, living hood money from here. But you need to take all the resources uh, from the universities if they are providing. They are provide, and I'm pretty sure all the universities have the career consultancy, a uh, career guidance uh, section, and all. So just take all the advantage from them. So Absolutely, the I, I do agree with that. Okay, that leads me uh, a note to the very important sort of part, uh, the job sort of side. So uh, when when did you start applying for the jobs? Obviously, you were studying. You you came as a student. Uh, when uh, obviously that's one of the question when did you start and when is when is you reckon is the best sort of timing when the students start their journey basically uh, studies here Wh when is the best time to start looking for the jobs and applying for those ones? uh for graduate roles mainly most of the big companies and the the companies who is having the sponsorship license uh, within themselves uh, they start their uh, graduate role one year prior or six months prior if you are coming for the september intake like for 2021 i came in 2021 all of them graduate roles have started in august when i was in my final semester so i started when i was in india and uh, our most of the middle companies who is having the sponsorship license they start six months prior because it takes time it takes three four five months and some of the companies who just go with the recruiters and uh, they just uh, take your CV and uh, look into your LinkedIn profile and uh, just call and interview calls some of the other process and uh, before the uh, offer letters. But to start with the best time, I would say, yeah, if you are coming on September, it takes one month to just settle down to uh, uh, solve out your accommodation, to solve out your part-time jobs. And uh, just after finishing these things, start applying as soon as you can get into it because you are if if you if you just delay things uh, most of the people are behind you 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 are in the competition and a lot of students are coming in these three last three or four intakes a lot of students so as many as students come here you don't have too much jobs as well you have like competition you you don't want to be just behind with everyone if you delay one day you will get behind of five people so apply as soon as you settle down here in the uk just apply okay you will get motivation once you will just apply you will learn from your mistake it's not just uh, demotivate get feel demotivated oh i'm getting rejections and all i have like 350 rejections <laughs> before getting this job so it's like just settle down and apply start applying now absolutely I, I i would watch that because it's it's a learning process obviously as i said uh, when when you come to the new market so you need to learn that sort of skills i mean how you apply how you respond basically and you need to judge yourself as well how you would you respond basically you apply for certain jobs um it's, it's not it's not necessary you will get a response from every uh, every sort of application you'll send across so obviously there'll be only a few you will get a response and that's where you built up that confidence and that sort of basically skill there so by the time you complete your course, uh, so you're pretty much ready actually to go on the market. Basically, that's that's where it's really important, as you mentioned, uh, to start the, the earliest that you start the uh, the better. Basically, going there. So uh, how was actually in, in your personal sort of yeah circumstances? How was the response from the industry when you start applying for these jobs? Like, I mean, were you getting any sort of responses or completely sort of you you were ignored there? I mean. Uh, can, can you just explain that, please? Um, when I was in India, I started applying and obviously nothing happened. When I came here, I got a interview, initial interview, video call interview from a company. Um, I had an interview with them and as I said, I haven't had any experience. So that interview wasn't that much. So I failed. Then I applied. No response, no response, no response. I go, all right, fine. Then uh, after, after some time, when I learned from my mistakes, I, I just put my efforts more to the things where I need to. 
then I I got a call from a company and I I passed one second, third, and fourth stage. And when I was on the assessment day here, we have assessment day as well. And over there they said to me like, you are too young to go with this role. And that role was graduate role. And we are supposed to give sponsorship to the person who is having five or six years of experience who can put some of the uh, value to our company. And for you to sponsor us, you can't put any value. I said, I'm graduate. All right, you don't have any experience as well. So I said, okay, so graduates are freshers. Somehow, somewhere they need to start as well. How can I start? And if you know that, like I'm, 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 you have my CV. I don't have experience. You know that. So why did you take my four stages? Why I'm here in the, my five stages? They said, I'm really sorry. So, okay, that demotivated me somehow. But, okay, you learn from them. I just applied, applied. Then on April, I applied for Canada. And you know about that. I got offer from the Canada as well. But um, obviously, I came here. I don't want to start another life with zero things from Canada. Then I applied, applied. Uh, I got one job offer in uh, July. Then I got one job offer in August. So I, I joined the company who gave me the offer on August. So from there, I started my career. It's now nine months of experience. No, absolutely. As as you said, I mean, you started quite early in your when when you start join join the uh, universities here. So that gives you basically the skills. But, uh, but yeah, how how to apply? And you go through those process, like you say, you you got the offer in July, which was still you were still doing your MSc. Like I mean, that was by end of the your course sort of duration. You were pretty much yeah, there. You got the job basically. So it's it's again, it's really important that the the early you start. The more skills, the more sort of yeah, uh, yeah, the skills you get basically how how to deal with these sort of uh, things. Uh, in terms of like, I mean, obviously you got the job, but obviously before that you have applied through the CVs and your skills, your competency. How did you manage that one? Basically, did you have gone like I mean, individual sort of application, look at the uh, look at the job specification, updated your CV? Or you had just the blanket sort of your CV and you apply to everything. I mean, how how, how was your approach in that sense? Uh, I still have like eight or nine CV and on them I prioritize like this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. So I usually prefer to go with uh, companies' career site. I had a list of all the companies like these companies are having graduate roles and so I usually go every day in the library to that career site I applied or it takes time to apply. It is like drainage of your brain. So I used to read their job description. With job description, I just take some of the words of like uh, keywords and I just apply to that CV. Then I just read my CV. Then I apply. It's not like just blind your eyes and just apply, apply, apply with all the sites. Sometimes even you are feeling frustrated, just do it, but don't do it. Like uh, sometimes quality is better than quantity. You will apply three or four companies, but do your best with that. So that was in my mind. I don't want to just apply all the companies and and just have a list of all the recruitment agencies as well. Do do send your CV to them because whenever the some some jobs started, uh, whenever the, some job vacancy are there and your CV is matching with them, they will call you and that helped me as a, a uh, for getting my job. I got a recruitment call, uh, recruitment agency call. So. You have to just build your CV and you have to just play with your words. Just take bullet points. Uh, I had six months of experience, so I have to show everything within that six months and obviously final year projects and all. So you have to put bullet points. Don't be three or four lines. What, what you have done, how you have done, and what impact does it give to the company where you worked? Simple. One, one line, two line. Don't go three, four line. No one is going to read that. I know that... Uh, Employer just spend six or five seconds to just look one CV. So if you have that keyword, they will stick into your CV and they will just put side. Then they will read that. So keep this in your mind. Don't apply with just random. Have five, ten CVs. And if that job is uh, matching with this CV, then apply with that CV. Don't have like one CV and apply, 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 apply. You will not get any response if you don't have experience. If you have experience of two, three years, that will help a lot. Experience helps in the UK. No one is going to look into your degree and what you have done. Everyone is going to look at your experience. Experience is more valuable here as compared to other countries. I'm not sure about the India and Pakistan because I only did a six months of internship. But here, experience values a lot. So that I, I, Absolutely, Anuj. I, I, I will agree to that. Like, uh, when, when it comes to the CV, the keywords is really, really important. Because that's that's how basically they choose the candidates. Obviously, that 
CV is your only representation towards yeah, the recruitment agency and towards the employer. So obviously the right keywords there, the right sort of skills, what you have to offer to the employer, uh, that is important. And that's how you basically top up the list base uh, in, in that sense. So it is important yeah, to, to update your CV, look at the what the employers needed from your end as long as you actually tie in those sort of PR skills, the requirements from the employer into your CV, uh, that brings you on the top, basically. Okay, and Anuj, uh, just briefly, I want you to just give a bit of an explanation of your sort of your personal experience with the, uh, obviously, you, you got a couple of jobs offers um, yeah, for, from the industry. Uh, uh, how was the interview and the assessment? I mean, you if you had that that one, can you just briefly explain that process, please? Um, when I when I got a call, I had a phonic interview. They just usually know about yourself, like who you are, what you are doing. It's not informal, but not informal. You have to pre represent yourself for the next round. Then I cleared that one. I got next day a call to come uh, to the face to face for an interview and assessment day. So I went over there, uh, they gave me a, a technical question and I had like half an hour, 35 minutes. It was it was a technical question. And uh, to be honest, I was not able to solve that. Uh, I just did around 40 to 50 percent. And then I had a, a conference type. They just gave me a topic and they were sitting in front of me, their colleagues and all. I just had to say something 15 to 20 minutes to check my soft skills. I'm, I'm again repeating soft skills are major majority of getting job as compared to technical skills it is okay that you don't have that much of technical skills or basics but you need to just improve your soft skills your your communication skills your listening skills how you react your eye to eye contact your everything you need to have a good body posture and soft skills so after that uh, they they just saw my paper and i, I told them like I, I was not able to solve 100 percent. then they said to me like I still remember that uh, design manager, they, she said to me, if you solved it, you are not here for a graduate role. We know that uh, you are not able to solve properly. I said, all right, thank you very much. Then uh, I had a discussion with her around one hour and that interview, they just asked me about my background and my universities, what was my final year project. And yes, dissertation is quite important. Dissertation and dissertation topic is quite important. They, they want to know about your research, what you have done, how you have done. So I had discussion with that and some of the technical questions and uh, three or four questions is why this company and uh, introduce yourselves. And, and one more question was like situation based question. One tell me some sometime you have like this situation and how you tackle that. So you have to be be prepared with that. How you going to answer that after that? I had a HR interview. Uh, it, it was around 30, 30, 35 minutes. She normally asks same questions what she asked. Tell me something about yourself, your visa things. Yeah, you have to be certain with your visa. You have to be proper clearly. I have, I am a student visa. Yes, I do have a two-year visa. How about the sponsorship? Just clear with that. And then, then I had a, a 15 and 20 minute, 10 or 15 minute discussion because the office with, where I'm sitting, uh, the head of that, all the companies sitting, he, he had an informal discussion with me. And then next day I, I got an offer from them and then I joined. So it was like three, four light of interview. Uh, so your group discussion or something, your soft skills, your technical paper, and then you clear things. No, that's that's important because that's exactly what I generally pointed out. I mean, technical skills, I mean, especially for graduates, is only the basics. I mean, that's all you need. I mean, they don't anticipate actually the employer that you need to know the, all the standards all the analysis all the softwares they don't expect you to have all those sort of skills there uh, at, at a graduate level so it's more about the team working your presentation how you communicate i mean that is important actually to get the graduate job so well said there uh, right anuj uh, so from your experience, I, I want you to just pick three most important factors. I mean, uh, one should consider uh, when it comes to finding a job in the UK. Um, three more. Number one is uh, just build your CV the best. Don't uh, sometimes I saw someone is uh, having no experience and they're having their CV two or three pages. No one is looking into it. No one is looking. It. Just be one page if you don't have experience. If you have experience, go two or three pages. I, I am not sure about that. 
CV is number one, number two, your soft skills and especially your communication skills. How how you gonna represent yourself? This is the main. This is the main because uh, after coming to the industry, you need to just deal with your clients. You need to deal with a lot of queries. Like for engineering, you need you have to be on Teams meeting. This is query how. Huh? So you have to be proper in your communication skills. You have to be. And number three, uh, learn from your mistakes. Learn. Uh, everyone is learning from your mistakes. Uh, if you don't go, if you don't play, how you gonna win that? Okay, lose it. But for next match, you know that this is my weakness. Just put that weakness into your strength. Just just be calculative and research a lot. You have to spend time. You have to spend time to everything. You, you are not supposed to just a spoon feeding here in the UK. Okay, you will learn. Uh, 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 you will become a person who will do everything by yourself. It's your personal life. For professional, you, you also have to do everything by your own. So just these three things. CV, communication skills, learn to research. You have to go through it. Yeah, uh, thank you, Anuj, for sharing those uh, three most important skills there. Uh, right, I'm, I'm just coming towards your sort of now, you, you have got now the graduate job. And I just wanted to, wanted you to share, actually, uh, because there's lots of anxiety from the graduates as well. Like, I mean, when they join a company, uh, what they need to go through, basically, what sort of training or mentorship that will be available to them. So obviously, you have been working for about nine months now in the industry. So I just wanted to briefly explain, actually, that process. Obviously, once you joined a company, uh, uh, how how did that all went basically? Did you get straight away on the projects, or you had those sort of yeah train training sort of yeah the initial training? You going through those ones. So if you can briefly explain that, please. Uh, for for my company, they had like a lot of work pressure when I joined. Uh, they just gave me a briefly introduction how they work, uh, what they work, and which field they are in, and all. Obviously, I, I knew that because I had a research on that company. But from the next day, I was in in the live project, and uh, the one who was training me, he said to me, "Just do mistakes. No worries. Just just be full open. I know you 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 don't have too much of knowledge, but how you will gonna learn?" Then I started. Okay, I did a, a lot of mistake. I did a lot of mistake. I, I said to him. I don't know how to do it. Just say directly, I don't know how to do it. And a lot of people is running from uncomfortable position. How how you will uh, get to know about the field if you don't go to the uncomfortable? If you want to be a comfortable position, just sit in the same place and do the same job. So he put me a lot of uncomfortable things. But yeah, before doing any, before I was doing anything, he he gave me a proper training. Like this is how we do this, and if you know this formula, I know universities are nothing, just a paper. And he explained me. He just gave me all the details about everything before doing anything. And if if I had any question, I just went directly to him. Uh, please explain me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. One time, two time, three time. But at last, you know that. Okay. So it took me around four to five months. What what all things of. Uh, work how we do how we have done this but for the live project then then now i know what what we are doing as a graduate we know what we are doing and initially we are just having a step step one step two step three step four for six nine months i'm on step three step four now he will train me for the next thing it's it's, it's a process of one to 1.5 year or sometimes it's two year but yes you will learn it you are not supposed to have all the knowledge into your mind and yes i will start doing everything uh, you have seniors you have seniors they will just teach you they will give you all the lessons and do mistakes do mistake don't be afraid of doing mistakes and okay what will happen after that so go with the uncomfortable position just hustle over there and just be comfortable after that so this is what i learned with my company oh that's that's brilliant now i, I would watch that actually every company has similar sort of procedure obviously when the graduate join in uh, they know they know beforehand. I mean, you you are here for the training to get the trained, and obviously it's a long term process for the employer as well. I mean, they hire graduates to keep them for a long term, not just for six months or one year. Obviously, they know they need to train su such and such person. I mean, to be there and ultimately become manager of of that company. Basically, that that is the ultimate goal of the companies as well. So um, that 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 is basically what the graduate should anticipate as well when they join in so don't don't get into the mindset that 
you will be given like a bridge or building design that for me basically from in the next month ah, or so. Exactly. so yeah yeah ex no i i know most of the mindset is is like such yeah i mean you expect you are engineer now you've done your master so people would anticipate basically just design anything for me uh but yeah as, as you explained basically it doesn't work that way so you are in the traineeship when when you join yeah it's a great job and uh, you get all the training and the mentorship basically to go through the process right and uh, about your visa status so have you managed to change your visa to sponsor uh now yeah the skill worker visa now or what, what's your status at the moment uh before joining i had a discussion with them uh, i was on my student visa and they said like okay uh because my colleagues uh he's he's uh, getting sponsorship uh, very soon within one month i guess because he had two or three uh, three years of experience he also joined with me but i haven't had any experience so they want me to just first show myself in in my world they want me to show myself and my the student visa got expired on january this year and i was uh, on probation period so this thing but one thing keep in your mind just be sure with your sponsorship just let them know about yeah this is my criteria and please put onto your contract so that you are be sure and just just for having assurance your company is on having sponsorship license or not you have a list of uh, sponsor license companies on government website you can see over there my company's name is over there so i know I, they have sponsorship right now i am on psw and uh, once he will get it they want me to do one year at least in this then they they will process the next thing and for sponsorship and all so okay, i so had, i just cleared everything with hr and even manager yeah, as well absolutely no that that is crucial you need to be really clear with with your sponsor about your status so obviously you don't create doubts i mean when it comes to basically getting that sponsorship or any uh, any sort of help because that is now your future when you join someone basically some company so you need to ensure you have clear uh, you you have clear up everything about your visa status and that's that's how the best you can get help as well from from them as well from their end uh right anuj i mean that is really really useful sort of yeah uh, obviously is a short time uh but i'm sure lots of uh, the question the basic questions actually are raised here uh that is mostly on the mindset of the graduate sir one one uh sorry to interrupt you one more thing a lot of people is just running for the sponsorships and with psw companies have that advantage they want you to serve first on your psw then they will show your uh, potential and all then they will decide obviously they don't want to let you go because if if they are putting some time into you they want obviously they want you to sponsor but you are not supposed to get like uh, okay previously we don't had didn't had any uh, uh, psw and also company had to give sponsorship right now they have that advantage of psw they want you to go first psw then they want let you know okay yes you have potential and we are sponsoring you and the second thing uh, it, it's quite tricky company wants you to just serve more to them company because you have two years of psw then they will sponsor you, sponsor you so for for uh, you will serve long time for the company so they have their mind so don't rush for the sponsorship you will get it if you have that skills and potential don't don't run with sponsorship just focus on your soft skills and everything about your brain and your knowledge then you will get it definitely don't worry about that and i'm sure yeah lots of uh, the graduates i mean they, they are embarking on the same uh, route as as you already uh, passed through uh, they they will have a knowledge uh, at least i mean if they are thinking about we are coming over to the uk so at least uh, they have a, a mindset now what they should think about it um any final thoughts what you want to pass on to the graduates anu um uh, i said in earlier like i'm too small to put any uh, conclusion or like any uh, guide of guidance uh, but just two thing just two thing um, it's normal thing just keep into your mind like i had in my mind still i have my mind number one is like uh, he who thinks he can he who thinks he can't if you just convince your brain okay i am able to do it you will get a self confidence uh, if you are not able to just put that confidence into your brain if if you are uh, self confidence saying no i am not able to do it you are not able to do it so that's why i said like he who thinks he can he who thinks he can't and the second thing is like about the communication skills uh, 
okay well, let the family and friends uh, apart for this you have you, you should casual with them but when you are in your professional life and when you are uh, speaking with someone who is having 20 years of experience like you in front of me you have to put your words before you have to put your words out of your mouth before thinking thrice into your brain because whatever you are speaking you will let the world know who you are so don't be like anything and don't show your weaknesses just be go with your strength so these two things just keep this mind this help me a lot and i i i think this will help a lot other graduates as well and don't be like afraid like if you don't have experience just go with the flow you will get it for sure you will get it if you have a proper skills and proper everything you will get it it's not that things like okay this is impossible to do it a lot of people are getting sponsorship job so it's like that this no, that's, that's, that's that's brilliant uh, and someone needs to start at some point anyway i mean so obviously experience come at some point so you need to start somewhere and uh, that's uh-huh. exactly yeah as, as a graduate as a new student as they come in picture basically they have to start from somewhere as long they have the zeal that that sort of yeah actually anxiety that i have to go basically for such and such thing and i'm sure yeah uh, the things just rolls up basically uh, and it, it comes there